the question is about Kaepernick. Here's what Carlos Hyde said um, on Monday, a uh, former teammate of uh, Colin Kaepernick's, uh, fresh off his first career 1,000-yard season. So Hyde's career on the football field is definitely – uh, something that's uh, uh, trending upward, and he had this to say about uh, the situation. Uh, what can the NFL do? The NFL, can, I think the NFL can start by signing cap back. I think if they sign cap back, that uh, that show that they're really trying to move in a different direction. Um, because um, Cat was making a statement four years ago um, about what's going on in today's world, and um, the NFL didn't bother to listen to him then. Um, so I think they should start by doing that. Do you think that that would be um, an actual true signal? Or do you think Kaepernick wouldn't want to be part of something like that because it might just be a box checked by the NFL? How do you take a statement like that, Robert Klemko? Yeah, you know, I think you do have to consider the role Kaepernick wants to play at this point because right. – you know, there is so much pressure on the league, and I'm sure, you know, for years that there have been elements of NFL ownership that have said to, you know, certain owners, certain general managers, if you guys can make this happen, it takes a lot of political pressure off of us. Um, but Kaepernick may not want to go into a situation where he's not actually competing for a starting job or he's not actually needed if it feels like it's just being done to – satisfy the you know the tides of public opinion that are swaying so rapidly right now um the the big mystery with kaepernick is what he wants because he doesn't speak in the media that often he's not the vocal leader that i think a lot of people that are on his side want him to be he is has become a symbol in a lot of ways i mean when was the last time you heard colin address any of these issues of his unemployment in public in an interview. I mean, it, it, I think his camp has always been on the st of the stance that, you know, we don't want to put it out in the media and have the media, media manipulate our words, right? But there are so many avenues now for expression if you're an athlete that is unmitigated by anybody else's voice. And I think, you know, in the next several months are his opportunity to – I, I, you know, set the record straight and press the NFL on this idea that he continues to be blackballed based on um, his political stance. Well, I guess, you know, Robert Klemko, The Washington Post, we got to just linger on this issue for a second here. Um, you know, I guess the last time we heard Kaepernick say something uh, on the subject was after the debacle. There's no other way to describe what happened um in the state of georgia uh, was that last november for the uh tryout that was you know slammed together is the only way to put it and then mm -hmm. you know with an odd very odd timing on when it happened why it happened never really was any description as to why it happened and then the mistrust the distrust that 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 sparked a change of venue at the last second um, debacle from start to finish is the only way to describe that. Uh, that's kind of the last time. And, and by the way, if he wants to, you know, uh, speak publicly and not have his, his words uh, taken other than what's coming out of his mouth, he could come on a, a live radio and television show like this one um, and just, and just <laughs> have the floor. Uh, I'll say that once again. So, uh, right, I mean, that, that what the hell happened last November and can that genie be put back into the bottle and uncorked and, and start again, do you think? Yeah, you know, I think there were several miscommunications and there were, sev there were several of his terms that weren't met um, when it was first talked about, you know, him having this tryout uh, in Georgia at the, at the Falcons complex. And I think the main one was that he wanted the media there to document it because, you know, if I were Colin, I wouldn't want – all of these teams to then come away from that tryout and have these anonymous scouts say, yeah, he really just didn't have the zip on his fastball anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's, I think that's the easy way out for a lot of these teams, but you know, from the team perspective, there's really no precedent for letting media come watch a, a mass free agent tryout. Right. Um, but I think the mistake for players is to focus on whether or not Colin comes back as some sort of marker for a measure of, you know, 
the NFL's acceptance. I mean, there's so many other things that the NFL can do that can advance the, the fight against racial inequality. I mean, first and foremost, finally figure out a way to um, have African-American coaches in leadership positions and, and head coaching positions and African-American general managers because there are so many people that are in that pipeline who aren't getting the same opportunities as, you know, this good old boy network where you're seeing coaches' sons and relatives of coaches and son-in-laws of coaches hired to prominent coaching positions all over the league and a lot of African-American coaches who have, you know, put in more time and had more success being skipped over. So, I, you know, I think that's the first thing the NFL can do. And the other place where, you know, nobody in the NFL in the leadership has stepped up is in this discussion of compensating student athletes in the NCAA. Because right now the NFL is a beneficiary of a system that some argue robs a lot of African-American teenagers coming out of poverty of their earning power in the athletic prime of their careers. And you haven't heard anybody in the NFL in a leadership position talk about the equity of that or the fairness of that. And it's because the NFL benefits from that pipeline. 